little overview on cerebral perfusion pressure and what happens when we have bleeding into the brain. <clears throat> we know that inside a fixed volume, we, we have a certain amount of pressure. So if we look inside our skull, most of what is in there is our brain. It's also cerebral spinal fluid. And all this put together um, creates a pressure that we call the um, intracranial pressure, or ICP. Now, our blood pressure has to be greater than our intracranial pressure, so we can have blood flow that go up the carotid arteries, go up to the brain, provide the oxygen and the nutrients and all that. So normally, our blood pressure, which we will measure as our mean arterial pressure, is greater than the intracranial pressure. And that way, we have perfusion to the brain, brain gets oxygen, it's happy, and all is well, until we have some sort of a head injury and we begin to have bleeding in the brain. Now, again, being a fixed volume, we can't expand, it won't get bigger, it keeps the same size. So as more blood flow or more blood leaks into the cranium, our intracranial pressure will increase and more blood flow means more intracranial pressure. Well, if our ICP becomes greater than our blood pressure or our mean arterial pressure, our MAP, if ICP is greater than MAP, then we don't have blood flow to the brain anymore and our brain gets unhappy. So the brain, in order to fix that, will then cause some peripheral vasoconstriction and increases the blood pressure. So now our MAP goes up. Now at this point, as our MAP goes up, our bleeding increases, and as our bleeding increases, we now have more intracranial pressure, so that our MAP must continue to increase. Our blood pressure goes up even more to try to overcome the intracranial pressure. And this ends up being a competitive thing, and eventually we end up in a downward spiral, and we have uh, death of the patient. So cerebral perfusion pressure, this is um, the amount of pressure that we need to have blood going to the brain. It's the mean arterial pressure minus the intracranial pressure. So CPP is equal to MAP minus intracranial pressure, or ICP. <clears throat> As our intracranial pressure goes up, our blood pressure must also increase, so overcome it, so we can keep blood flow going to the brain. Now, as the bleeding occurs in the brain and it fills up more and more volume, the brain has to go somewhere. It gets pushed and squished initially, but with the uh, edema that's occurring and the bleeding that's occurring, eventually there's no place for it to go except out the foramen magnum, which is at the base of the skull. That's the big hole where the spinal cord comes out. And when this happens, we call it brain herniation syndrome. And this um, usually looks, or we see it, in something called Cushing's triad. And with Cushing's triad, we see the blood pressure going up. As the um, brain starts to herniate, it pushes on the vagus nerve. It can actually slow down the heart. So we have a decreased pulse rate. And then we also have the Cheyenne Stokes breathing. Um, we may, in addition, see dilated pupils, either one or two of them, and we typically have a reduced Glasgow coma scale of eight or less. And if we were to draw out what Cheyenne Stokes breathing is, remember this is our deep, rapid breathing, followed by a little period of slow, shallow breathing, maybe even some apnea, and then it starts breathing fast and deep again, and then slow and shallow, and then fast and deep, and it repeats this process over and over again. So a real quick overview over intracranial pressure and cerebral perfusion pressure and what happens when we have bleeding in the brain. Hope this helps.